Okay, so now in this section, we're ready to move on to the gluteal region for treatment. Now we have a few considerations when we're working on the glutes. Um, in this uh, section, we're gonna talk about two different positions that you can utilize, and both of them are highly valuable so that you can access certain elements of the glutes in a better position. So we can always start in the prone position, which is easy to start with, especially if you have just finished working on the spinal extensors, you finished up on working on the sacral ligaments, it's very easy to go right to the next section, which is gonna be the glutes. In this area here, we can access a lot of the origin points along the iliac crest and just off to the side of the sacrum. And it can be a little bit more challenging to get to some of those insertion points around the lateral aspect of the hip in the prone position. In which case I would recommend to transition to the sideline position to more effectively address those tissues. When you get to the lower aspect of the glutes and the deep hip rotators, you can treat definitely a lot of those in the prone position. Sideline position promotes uh, a better access to some of the insertion points as well. So I find that using the prone position is a good way to start. Now, as usual, we're going to have some kind of bolster underneath the ASIS bones. That's going to soften uh, some of the extension in the lumbar spine and uh, prevent excess stress as we're pushing straight down. Now, most of the time, okay, if you're working in a more uh, therapeutic relaxation-based massage practice, you may have your clients disrobe completely and in more sports massage based setting, you're working with athletes or in a more medical setting, you may not do that. Um, so wearing a pair of shorts is oftentimes fine. But I do find that it is important to alert your client ahead of time if you're going to be working in this area to make sure that they're not wearing clothing that is too tight, which will be restrictive and very difficult to access. So in this case, he's wearing a loose uh, fitting pair of shorts, which is very easy for me to access underneath the tissues and um, to keep a nice boundary with the client. So it's really no difficulty to get to these tissues because we can slide the clothing downward and get to the top portion. And then to get to the bottom portion, we can just slide the pant leg up and access the hamstring attachments in and into the glutes as well. So it's important to understand that in order to get to this area very well, having appropriate clothing is, is really, really useful. Now, as usual, you'll always see me use a towel. I just wanna make sure that I don't get any lubricant on the uh, client's clothing. So I'm gonna tuck that down at an angle here so that I can access the upper portion of the glutes. Now, in this area, it's important to understand our anatomy as we've talked about. We have a lot of tissue here, very dense, okay? On top, we have the glute max, which is going to originate here on the sacrum and the various areas of the iliac crest as I went through in the anatomy section, okay? And underneath it, we have the glute medius, we have the glute minimus, and of course, in the upper region, we have the piriformis underneath there. And then we have the other deep hip rotators down in the inferior section, okay? Now with this area, we're always going to be thinking about, as with everything else, especially as we talked about in the extensor section, is we're gonna be treating from superficial to uh, the deeper layers of the tissues, okay? So, we're only going to be able to access as much as we release superficially. So a lot of times I find that there's so much effort to get down into those deeper tissues because we want to treat the piriformis, we want to treat the deep hip rotators, and um, there's a lot of pressure that's oftentimes exerted um, inappropriately through these superficial tissues causing the client a lot of discomfort trying to access those deeper fibers. And I'm gonna tell you that that is unnecessary to do. What we're often trying, is trying to do with people is to get their system to relax, to reduce threat and guarding. And in order to do that, what we wanna do is to comfortably work with the client at the level that the client's body is going to let us work. So that means not forcing our way, barreling down through those superficial tissues, trying to get to that deeper stuff, but instead keeping in mind that the therapeutic value is in the process or the journey of relaxing those tissues to get down into the deeper ones. And we're going to accomplish the effect that we want, okay? So in this section, as we're talking about doing our various gliding procedures, we are going to be impacting the deeper tissues, even if we are not making direct contact with them. So that is a really, really important point that I wanna make. Okay, so we're always gonna find our landmarks here. A landmark that's easiest to discover is the PSIS bone, that's the posterior superior iliac spine. 
and we can trace the iliac crest as we kind of glide around the side here that is where we're going to be doing our glides now you have a few different options in how you want to uh, glide in the gluteal area in the prone position i have long arms it's very easy for me to lean and i can treat across the body without too much of a problem because i want to go along the line and the orientation of the gluteal fibers which as moving in an inferior and lateral direction, those fibers are not going from head to toe. So it's very easy for me to position myself across the body on the opposite shoulder and to glide straight down and across. Now, if you have shorter arms, it's very difficult for you to reach across the body, you will probably need to treat this person either number one in the sideline position, okay, or two on the same side of the body. And you will have to sacrifice slightly uh, on the orientation of the fibers because you will be moving in a superior to inferior direction, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. It's not going to reduce the therapeutic value, okay? It just might be slightly less comfortable to a minor degree because you're not moving with the fibers, you're moving slightly at an oblique angle to the fibers, okay? So that's just something to consider. So for ease of the camera angle and position and for instruction, I'm gonna be going across the table so that you can see the contact points going into the insertion here, especially on the greater trochanter as we address this upper portion of the gluteal tissues, okay? So we use a little bit of lubricant. We make sure that we don't use too much, okay? Because we don't wanna be sliding all over the place on top of the skin with an oil slick and not being able to get into those tissues, okay? So I'll be using just enough here and I like to start my glides here right at the PSIS, okay? I'm going to be moving across the body as I mentioned, okay? So with a thumb-based position, I'm going to stack my fingers together. There's my PSIS, and I'm going to push down at an angle, sliding straight out to the greater trochanter, okay? So hopefully that's nice and clear on the camera here, as we can see. Sliding down and out, okay? Making contact in and tucking into that inside angle of the greater trochanter where those muscle attachments are going to be, okay? This is usually quite tender for people, so just make sure, as usual, you have good communication with your client. And I'm gonna be doing about five glides, and as usual, you can always do more glides, okay? If this technique proves to be useful and you wanna do more work in reducing threat and guarding, okay? There's my five glides. Now the choice, I can move in an inferior direction or I can move in a superior and more lateral direction, which is what I'm going to do. So we did that glide, we move over the thumb width to make sure that we can access all of those tissues. There's the iliac crest, so I'm gonna start just inferior to that. Two thumbs together, slide right down into the attachments on the trochanter, okay? And there we will get our five glides. Okay, and again, because my arms are so long, I can position myself over his head and continue this process, iliac crest, and again, it's easy for me to lean into this without putting too much stress on my body. But now you can see where the value is going to be coming toward the side of the table to access these tissues. And where most of our pressure is gonna be going at that oblique and inferior angle, okay, but don't worry, we're gonna come back and make sure that we address those more superficial um, origin points along the iliac crest. Okay, working our way around the side of the table here. Five glides, making sure that we're not just sliding across the superficial tissues, but we're actually getting in there. Comfort level of maybe a five to a seven, okay. There we go. And I'm gonna do one more glide because I'm gonna save some of this for the sideline position. And we do hit this section when we get really onto the lateral aspect when we are treating the TFL, uh, tensor fascia latte fibers, okay? Again, digging down to get to the greater trochanter insertion point. And we're definitely in the domain of the glute medius and the glute minimus, okay? So now we have our five glides going from superior to 
inferior lateral to our attachments. Okay. Now, if we're going to get to that lower section here, we're going to have to move down uh, clothing just a hair more. Okay, rebolster as needed. Okay, and from here, I'm going to identify the lower aspect of the sacrum. Okay, we don't go all the way down to the coccyx because you're really usually going to treat that element as we work from the hamstrings up and get that sacrotuberous ligament. Okay, but we are going to get a little bit of it here. So there was the PSIS. Okay, I started treating there. So I've probably got about two sections of glides that I can do here. Making contact with the sacrum and sliding just off to the side and down into the tissue. Okay, and it's important to note from an anatomical perspective, if we put one finger on the PSIS and one finger on the coccyx, 50% of the way between those two points, we're going to be finding the piriformis. Okay, that's where it's going to emerge from the anterior side of the sacrum. So we push down and again, gliding straight out to the greater trochanter region. And as we start to move down, we're going to be moving toward the attachment points uh, on the femur. Okay. So again, we have to work through the superficial tissues first, which is going to be predominantly glute max. You're probably going to feel that sacrotuberous ligament underneath as well. Okay, a little harder to feel that piriformis until you really start to get down in there. Okay, and we've got five glides on that section. And then we move inferior. This will be the last section that I treat here. Okay, so five. And again, I'm using one finger to hold down um, my bolster. Okay, my towel roll. Okay, and we got one more. There we go, into that attachment point. Okay, quite simple. Now, Something that we're not going to do here that we did in previous muscle groups is I do not move from an inferior to superior gliding motion in this area. It's oftentimes very difficult to keep the muscle flat because the glutes, as you start to push them up, are going to start rolling up as you get to the origin points. And it's somewhat uncomfortable. It's very difficult. It feels like a very flimsy uh, soft tissue uh, glide. So I will not oftentimes do that, or for the most part, I should say I never do it. So I always go from a superior to an inferior and lateral direction, okay, to get to those insertion points. Now, when I go back upward and I'm going to be treating the origin points here, I use ischemic compression and cross fiber work here at the top, okay? So again, for the purposes of the camera demonstration, I'm gonna do it here, okay? You will be able to see it from the top view but I'm going to start in that most inferior position that I went to, okay, down toward, we're just superior to the region of the coccyx, off to the side into the tissues, okay, thumbs together, and we push straight down, okay? So we're gonna be doing that ischemic compression. Now, oftentimes down there, that is not too tender, all right? So if we can do that without too much tenderness, then what we can do is we can do superior to inferior and inferior to superior uh, one inch segments of cross fiber based motion. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with inferior to superior. So here I go one, two, three, four, five. And there's a little bit of muscle twitching in there, so that was a little bit tender. Okay, and then I can stay in that same spot and then go superior to inferior for five repetitions. Okay, I'm going to glide up to the next section. Okay, making sure again, we're not just sliding over the skin, we're actually digging into the tissues. Inferior to superior, about five repetitions. And superior to inferior, five repetitions. Okay, we're gonna continue this process all the way around the iliac crest. Okay. And just being thorough and being mindful with the client that we're not um, eliciting too much tenderness because again or repeat this a million times what we're trying to do is to reduce threat and guarding okay so that's very very important while at the same time being thorough with our work okay and I'll climb around the side of the table here to start getting these elements now normally again you would be going in this direction because it's going to be you're gonna have a lot more leverage for your thumbs Okay, but 
but this is certainly a, a doable option as well if you're tall you have a lot of arm length like I do okay and we get those five repetitions and we work our way around so it's oftentimes going to get quite tender as we get to the origin points up here of the glute medius and the glute minimus okay and then we'll get one more and the reverse there we go okay simple now okay we have the option here of treating those insertion points on the greater trochanter from the prone position but this can also be done in the sideline position which I'll show you but I'll go ahead and show you in the prone position here that we would treat that as well so as you glide down to those insertion points and you feel the greater trochanter okay remember that we're going to try to scoop under okay the lip here that you feel on the greater trochanter because that's how those attachments are they're underneath they're not superficially on top of the bone so as I get down there again based on the level of comfort of the individual here then what we're going to do is compress lightly so that we can get that pressure exerted in there and then inferior to superior five repetitions and superior to inferior five repetitions okay and then we can move in a superior and more lateral direction just kind of following the trochanter around okay to the lateral aspect and we do the same thing and it's quite tender there okay so be aware of that okay and then I'm going to move to the side and I'll get the more lateral aspect here so I glide down there's the greater trochanter okay two three four five and one two three four and five okay so now we've got those attachments so it's a fairly straightforward and simple routine now before I finish this section what I want to make sure of is that in this position we do also have good um, leverage and ability and positioning to treat the insertion point of the glute max on the femur so we want to make sure that we address that so again, shorts, as you can tell, much easier way to deal with this, making sure that we don't have to treat through pants, clothing that's very hard to move around. But as you can see also, this routine is quite efficient if you need to treat somebody um, in a setting where they do not fully disrobe. It's not a problem to do that, okay? So as we work on this section here, we want to feel where the glute max is inserting. Very easy way to find it. Go ahead and lift up your leg for me okay and as we lift up the leg we could feel the glute max and this is oftentimes the thing that amazes people is how far down the insertion point is okay so go ahead and lower back down we're right down there on top of that femur and if you can't feel it you can glide back and forth okay lift up your leg again and it pops up right underneath my finger there okay so that's quite far down so we got to remember that okay and then relax down so we want to make sure that we trail those glute max fibers to their insertion point okay so we're going to do a little bit of lubrication we're going to try not to in this section anyway worry too much about everything else that's going on here in terms of the hamstrings because we will get to that later okay and again i'm going to treat across the table just for camera view to make it easier but find the position that works best for you you can stay on the same side of the table and glide down obviously what i'm doing requires a lot of arm length so it's not advisable for most people okay so we find where we were finishing okay with those deep hip rotators just in the superior uh, aspect to those okay and from there okay we are going to just glide straight down the femur okay so i'm going to use two fingers and i'm just going to slide straight down right to that point where i felt the glute max was inserting into and again it will usually be quite tender here okay four and five and I will move slightly medially okay and then kind of push in a lateral direction against the bone just to make sure that I get all of those fibers in the insertion point okay 
And I will go ahead and treat from an inferior to superior position. So I'm going to probably get in the way of the camera a little bit here, but so you can see what's going on. All right, so inferior, okay, and we will be working in that superior direction, okay? And that oblique angle, okay, toward the origin points. I'm one thumbing it here because that works for me. You can certainly use two thumbs. Some people like to use an elbow here, that's completely okay. Just make sure you can feel where you're at. I'm going to move in a slightly lateral direction, okay, right on top of the bone, being a little bit more gentle in this area. Okay, and there is my five. Okay. We can do a cross fiber motion here, although it's oftentimes quite uncomfortable. It's a little difficult to pin the muscle down. It's kind of like when we work on the hamstrings. I don't use a lot of cross fiber work in the hamstring area because I find that it's quite uncomfortable and oftentimes unnecessary because you're oftentimes going to get the result that you want without having to do that awkward and uncomfortable technique. So, but for here, if you can easily identify the insertion point, you can certainly do some um, medial to lateral and lateral to medial cross fiber based work. Okay. So I'll do a little bit of that here just to demonstrate. It's fairly simple, just like all the previous techniques that we've done. Okay. Just making sure that we're accurately working on the area. Okay. When they're, we're in the right spot. Okay. And that'll be the last one. Okay, so at this point, we've done a good job of treating the gluteal area. Now again, addressing the more superficial tissues as we are pushing down and toward the insertion points, we're getting the glute max, we're getting the glute minimus, we're getting the glute medius, okay? And also we are going to be addressing the piriformis. Okay, so Sam, how did we address the piriformis? Very simply because the piriformis is 50% of the way from the PSIS to the coccyx. So as we pushed down, okay, attempting to relax and work through the glute max, we are going to be impacting that piriformis. If we can't get right into the belly of the piriformis there, then what we are going to be able to do is influence it at the attachment point, okay, when we got to the greater trochanter. So we had a few opportunities to uh, work on influencing this muscle. Okay, the deeper hip rotators, the gemellus, okay, the quadratus femoris, and so forth, we were able to address by again working down into the attachment points on the femur as we worked our way down and we did our glides. So we are impacting those as well. Okay, the deeper work as we start to get to the hamstrings attachment on the ischium, we work around the sides of that we're going to be able to impact some of the origin points of the deeper hip rotators as well, but I include that in a separate routine. So from this point, we have done a pretty solid job at treating all of those tissues with the exception of some of those most lateral tissues. If you weren't able to get to them in this prone position, this would be the time that you would move the person to a sideline position so that you can more accurately address some of those more lateral fibers. Okay, so here we are now positioned in the sideline position, which is one of my uh, preferences for dealing with treating the insertion points in particular of the glutes. So laying in the sideline position, we have to remember that the glutes are hip extensors and lateral rotators. So that is going to allow the muscle group to be in a shortened position. It's gonna be a little harder to treat because all of the fibers are loose and they're hard to pin down. But in this position in the sideline, we can put the hips into a degree of flexion and adduction, that's adduction, as the legs are stacked together, which is going to pull some tension into the gluteal fibers and make them more superficial, easier to push into and to influence, okay? Now, this is a position you can try to treat some of the other tissues that we discussed in the prone position. Um, but again, it's very difficult to get to the attachments mostly, or the origin, I should say, on the sacrum and some of this aspect of the iliac crest in the sideline position. So you will find as you experiment with this, which works best for you. So in the sideline position, we're mostly going to be emphasizing 
the attachment points, the insertions, at the greater trochanter, the superior aspect, and of course on the femur, where our gluteal muscles attach. And in the sideline position, we're also going to have a greater degree of leverage to treat the more lateral aspect of the glutes, right up into the point where we run into the iliotibial tract and of course the tensor fascia latte. So from here, we can begin in a superior direction and finish what we were not able to do in the prone position, which is superior to inferior gliding to address the more anterior fibers of the glute medius and the glute minimus and some of the glute max fibers. Okay, so we can, again, as usual, add a little bit of lubrication. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to locate in this situation the ASIS bone, the anterior superior leg spine. And when I move just posterior to that, I'm going to feel a big chunk of muscle, that's the tensor fascia latte. And then I'm also going to feel a very dense ligamentous structure, okay? So once I feel that, I'm going to pop over that more posterior and then the first thing that I drop into is where we're going to initiate our glides, okay? So we wanna start as superior toward the top of the iliac crest as possible, stack the thumbs, and then glide inferior right until we get to the trochanter, okay? So we'll continue with our five glides, okay? Or so, you can of course do more, just to make sure that we're thorough in treating that tissue and because this is more readily accessible and we don't have the larger glute max muscles sitting on top of it, this is usually quite tender, okay? And oftentimes harbors trigger points. I'm going to move lateral again, okay? And this will be the last set of glides because I treated the rest of this tissue in the prone position. And we are going to get our five glides. There we go, okay? So now I've treated those lateral tissues. From here, we can go back to the origin and do our cross fiber work, okay? If we did not get it all in the prone position. So starting again, just posterior to that ligament, okay, we're going to push down and across. And again, the muscle's very thin right here. So it's very easy to elicit a good tenderness response, okay? Move lateral, again, quite tender. Okay, and then once we've gotten to the point where we start to feel the larger glute fibers, we're gonna reverse direction so we can move in a more medial to lateral direction. Okay, there we go. Now we can go to treating all of our insertion points on the greater trochanter and on the femur. Now we just have to remember where we're at at this point because in this position we have flexed the hip. So we have taken the most superior aspect of the greater trochanter, which is usually sitting up here, and we have actually moved it into a more posterior inferior direction. So actually the top of the greater trochanter is actually back here, it's not up here on the top. So we just have to be mindful of this. Now at this point, this tissue here, because we're in the sideline position, can be very tough to treat. It could take a lot of pressure. So you do again have the option of using your thumbs, which I always recommend in the beginning so you can feel your anatomy, or you can be using a T-bar. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and demonstrate using the T-bar in this area. Now, as we start to locate the head of the femur, the very top where the greater trochanter is, we have to remember what is happening there. We're going to get some overlap of the gluteal fibers, okay? Glutes are coming down into this direction as they start to merge and attach with the iliotibial tract. Deep underneath there, the muscle that primarily attaches to the top of the greater trochanter is going to be the piriformis. So this is a muscle group that a lot of people are interested in treating for issues like piriformis syndrome and maybe even sciatica. So we have to some degree treated this tissue already as we were doing our medial to lateral glides, especially in that prone position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here, okay? And because this area is so sensitive, I am going to just start with ischemic compression. So once I locate my head of the femur here, greater trochanter, I am just going to get good leverage and I'm going to push straight down. And as I push straight down, that's oftentimes going to elicit a good twitch response from the client because it is oftentimes very tender. I'm gonna wait on that till we get a release, okay? And then reposition and a slightly more, okay, for the body anyway, posterior and inferior direction, okay, and compress. 
And again, we're doing that ischemic compression. It's a little more tolerant and comfortable for the client, okay, rather than just digging right in there and doing a lot of cross friction work right away. Once that releases, we can continue to work our way around. Now, I'm gonna train places here because it starts to get kind of interesting down here on the lower end. Because we're getting so much tissue in there, we're going to be influencing those lower deep hip rotators as well. And in this case, we're going to be talking about outside of the piriformis, we're gonna be talking about the gemellus muscles, okay? And the obturators and the quadratus femoris. These are all the deeper lower hip rotators as they attach on top of the femur as well. So we have to make sure that we understand our anatomy here to understand that we are going to continue moving on that inferior direction around that femur so that we can influence those deeper hip rotators. They are important, and I feel that they are oftentimes missed because of the focus on the piriformis. Okay, so as I continue to compress in there and getting ischemic compression, just noting the level of tenderness that is there, waiting for uh, improper communication with the client that release, and continuing to work our way around, okay? Now you can go quite a bit down here, okay? And make sure that you get all of those attachments. You can get them in this position, and here I may, in this case, just for camera purposes, hop over so that I can get underneath the femur here and get the rest of those attachments, okay? I can clearly go through shorts or pants in this situation when I feel out my anatomy. And that's usually quite tender. It doesn't matter if you're going through clothing or not. And as we go through there and hit all of those points with ischemic compression, okay, then we can go back and do some cross fibering if it's tolerated, okay? If it's not tolerated, you might have to do a couple of treatment sessions just doing ischemic compression, which you're gonna get great results with. And then you can go back and add more cross fibering as the tissue sensitivity has decreased, okay? So, Going back to the top here and doing some cross fiber work, finding that head of the trochanter there, compressing straight down and moving with the T-bar, not just gliding over the skin in a superior to inferior direction. Okay, getting about five good repetitions and then repositioning the bar a little bit at a time, right? Because we don't have a lot of surface area to work with over the top of the trochanter before we really fall off of it, okay? And we can go right around the side here. Again, I'll transition for the camera. Not the best body mechanics here, but for demonstration purposes. Working our way around, okay, down onto the femur. Onto the femur, we're gonna find those attachments of some of those lower hip rotators, but also we're gonna catch some of the glute maximus fibers as they're swinging around to attach on the femur as well. Okay, so just gonna make sure that we're quite thorough there. When you get down to the bottom, then we're gonna trade direction and we're gonna go inferior to superior, okay? Doing our cross fiber work with five repetitions. Okay, and again, trading up. Inferior to superior motion. Five repetitions. Just being very thorough with the tissue. Okay, and there we go. Now, there's an additional thing that we can do that's beneficial in the sideline position, which is to get into the meteor belly portion of the gluteal region, which is oftentimes very hard to treat in the prone position. Again, as mentioned, because the fibers are being allowed to be in a shortened position and you're gonna be flipping over a lot of that stuff. So if we take that halfway point between the trochanter and the PSIS bone, that's a great area right there to be able to affect with a T-bar or you can use direct elbow pressure, which is a popular technique as well, which is just placing the elbow right into that area, resting in there to do some ischemic compression and waiting for a good release, and then you can reposition your elbow there as well. Now this is a fantastic area right here to be able to influence again, some of those denser gluteal fibers that are superficial, but what guess what's directly underneath it? The piriformis. So we're gonna be influencing the piriformis there as well, okay? So for piriformis, if you remember the anatomy, the easiest way to find it is to find the PSIS and find the bottom of the coccyx, the tailbone, and then 50% of the way between those two points, that's the halfway mark, if we put our finger there and then we find the greater trochanter, the superior aspect 
our piriformis is going to be right there between those two points. Okay, so you could see that it's slightly a little bit more inferior than it was just previously. But again, that's a perfect location to place our T-bar for treating that piriformis and pushing straight in, okay, or placing our elbow right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just do some ischemic compression there. All right, so I'm going to take our T-bar and I'm just going to push straight in, and elicit a good tenderness response right there. And we're going to hold until that releases and then reposition and continue along that pathway going down the hip. Okay, usually again quite tender. Sometimes you'll find trigger points that are referring down the leg. Okay, and those are going to be ones you want to hang out on and get them to release and relax, desensitize. Okay, and again I'm going to switch sides because I'm going to continue because we cannot, cannot forget about our lower hip rotators including the gemellus, the obturators, and the quadratus femoris, which again, I can't place enough, enough emphasis on because they tend to be skipped. Now, when you're down into this area as well, okay, you are going to be hard pressed to miss the sacrotuberous ligament as it's coming down as well. So while there's no direct treatment for that, we are indirectly treating it by just making sure that we're thorough with all of our gliding procedures, and of course, going back and doing cross fiber work with our um, T-bar, okay? And as we get about one more glide here, okay, usually quite tender, can hold on there, wait for a good release, and then move on, okay? Cross-fibering techniques, as we talked about, starting back toward the top here at that midpoint, and we can just cross-fiber straight across there. Just remember that when you're on the more superior lateral aspect, these fibers are much thinner, they cannot take a good degree of pressure. So it doesn't take much, even just kind of gently pushing down with my hand and using a little bit of body weight is more than enough to effectively treat those tissues as they are very, very tender in most people. And as you scroll down, especially with the T-bar, you're gonna be finding or, or feeling out those fibers that are more rigid. You can feel that they're, they're quite tight, okay? And continue my gliding procedure. Okay, and again, depending on how the person is robed, you may have to kind of sink down underneath the pant line or, okay, wipe off the T-bar so you get some of the lubrication off and you can continue treating on top of or through, I should say, the clothes, getting five repetitions of gliding. Okay, last one. Okay, now when you're at the bottom, guess what? Of course, we're going to start from an inferior to superior gliding motion. So we're gonna work our way back up, just making sure that we're gliding through all of those tissues effectively, okay? Not doing a superficial treatment, just gliding over the skin, making sure that we're pushing in to emphasize those deeper fibers, okay? And again, just for camera purposes, I'll kind of stay out of the way so you can see, but not the best body mechanics, okay? and working our way back up again. Okay, and that one's very tender right there. There we go. Okay, so now we've done a fairly solid job at treating the glutes. We've done the superficial tissues with our glides. We've gone back and done um, compression, ischemic compression along the iliac com uh, crest along with cross fiber manipulation, going superior to inferior, inferior to superior. We have now examined and treated our insertion point here on the greater trochanter and worked our way around the femur to get some of the insertion points of the piriformis and the lower um, hip rotators and their attachment points, okay? And of course, as we went back through and we did compression with the T-bar and did our cross fiber, we were able to access those deepest layer of tissues, including those deeper hip rotators, of course, a little bit more of the glutes on that, that more inferior uh, aspect of the gluteal region, and influenced a little bit of the sacrotuberous ligaments. So this is a complete routine for treating the entire gluteal region, and you'll want to make sure that you choose the best option or combination of options for treating this area with both either side lying or prone positioning.